Hello friends, welcome to Mechanical Engineering Online Classes. Today's lecture will be delivered by Miss Shravanti Sri Ramoju. In our previous video, we have derived the natural frequency of free torsional vibrations as Fn is equal to 1 by 2 pi into square root of Gj by Il. Now here we are considering a shaft which is shown in a green color. The one end of the left end of the shaft is fixed and the other end the right end of the shaft is attached with a rotor. So rotor is a device which rotates. So when uh, if I draw the amplitude diagram of this particular setup, there is a shaft connected to a rotor at one end and fixed at the other end. Now the amplitude of uh, the shaft amplitude of vibration of shaft at point A will be zero because this end is fixed the rotation is not possible but at the end B where the rotor is attached to the shaft the amplitude will be maximum and that is represented as A A is the maximum amplitude one more important point here is the point where the amplitude is zero is called node and the point where there is maximum amplitude of vibration that point is called anti node so here in this particular setup of the of shaft and rotor point a is the node point and point b is the anti node point because at point a the amplitude of vibration is zero because the shaft is fixed at, at this point and at point B there is anti, anti node because maximum deflection or maximum amplitude of vibration will occur at point B where the rotor is attached. And this setup is called single rotor system because there is only one rotor attached to the shaft. Now if we are to replace this shaft rotor system into a spring mass system then it would somewhat look like this. There is a shaft here and rotor here. The torsional stiffness of this shaft is KT and this entire system is replaced with the spring mass system where the spring is having a spring constant or the stiffness value as K. The value of mass is M. Now instead of one shaft, if we assume two shafts here of diameters d1 and d2 this is the first shaft with the diameter d1 and length l1 and the second shaft d2 diameter and l2 length is attached to a single rotor so this is still a single rotor system only but the shafts are more in number and the torsional stiffness of first shaft is assumed to be kt1 and the torsional stiffness of second shaft is assumed to be KT2. So it is still a single rotor system because there are there is only one rotor but the number of shafts are not one. It is two. And we have already seen if the shafts are connected end to end then you call the, that as shafts in series. So this particular arrangement comes under shafts in series. So this is the actual system. Now if we draw or replace this with a equivalent system then it will be two springs attached end to end with stiffnesses K1 and K2 and there is a mass at the end of the second spring whose value is m and one end of the first spring is connect uh, is fixed so this is the equivalent system for a two shaft single rotor combination so in this case if we write the k equivalent then 1 by k equivalent will be equal to 1 by k1 plus k2 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 so this is for spring mass system but here we are considering the tor torsional stiffnesses. 
so i will assume that it is 1 by kt equivalent is equal to 1 by kt1 plus 1 by kt2 this is for a torsional system this is for linear system in the linear system the spring stiffness is uh, k and for a torsional system the you have to assume the torsional stiffness so again we know that kt1 that is the torsional stiffness of first shaft is equal to gj by l and all the values are for shaft 1 g value is for 1 j is for 1 and l is for 1 so corresponding uh, gj l value should be taken uh, for shaft 1 and kt2 will be equal to gj by l of second shaft so from these uh, equations we can find because we know the value of kt1 no, uh, uh, assuming that we know g value of 1 j value of 1 and l value of 1 and kt2 is also known because g value of second shaft j value of second shaft and l value of second shaft are known so once we know these values we can find kt1 and kt2 and from that we can find the equation uh, the value of kt equivalent with the help of this particular equation now once we know the kt equivalent the natural fre frequency can be found out with the help of this formula which we have already derived 1 by 2 pi into under root kt equivalent divided by i now for example the same single rotor system is assumed to be attached to two shafts which are kept in parallel like for example there is a shaft 1 whose diameter is d1 and the length is l1 and the torsional stiffness is kt1 it is attached to a rotor this is a rotor and other end of the rotor is attached to a second shaft whose diameter is d2 length is l2 and torsional stiffness is kt2 this type of combination comes under shafts in parallel with this is this also we have seen in the previous video shafts in parallel so in this case if we want to replace this with a spring mass system it would uh, look somewhat like this there is a, a spring whose stiffness is k1 and a mass and another spring with uh, stiffness k2 so in between both the uh, springs there is mass attached so this is the actual system and this is the equivalent system so in this case kt equivalent will be simply the summation of kt1 and kt2 so again kt1 is nothing but gj by l of shaft 1 and kt2 is the gj by l value of shaft 2 so once we know these two equations we can easily find the kt equivalent and replace this in the natural frequency formula in the formula for natural frequency we have the value of i the term i which is the mass moment of inertia of disk here the disk is nothing but rotor in the previous video we have derived natural frequency of free torsional vibrations of shaft attached to a disk at one end and fixed at other end so here i was the mass moment of inertia of the disk but in this case the mass moment of inertia of the rotor has to be considered because rotor is the rotating component the previous case there was combination of shaft and disk and here we have a combination of shaft and rotor so i value is the move uh, mass moment of inertia of disk but in this case it is the mass moment of inertia of rotor so the formula for mass moment of inertia of rotor is i is equal to mk square by 2 which is in kg meter square for a rotor 
और ए थिन डिस्क k which is the radius of gyration is equal to r by root 2 what is r it is the radius the radius of the rotor or the disc which is measured in meters so i becomes m into r by root 2 whole square so it is m r square by 2 kg meter square thanks for watching If this video was of help to you please like it and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel